You are Dusk Dude, a treasure hunter who has intruded upon the fictitious town of rural Dusk, Pennsylvania. Instead of treasure, however, you've found cultists and other strange occult creatures. Using a heavy arsenal of pistols, shotguns, and other familiar weaponry, as Dusk Dude, you must battle through desolate farmlands, military installations, twisted science labs, and Lovecraftian ruins that all harken back brilliantly to the first-person shooter games of ye old 90s. Dusk is a fast-paced and well-crafted nostalgic shooter that will leave you wanting to play it all in one sitting. Released on Steam in 2018 by New Blood Interactive, Dusk is a nostalgic throwback to classic games like Quake and Doom. And although it takes inspiration from these old school games in terms of visuals and gameplay, it still manages to stand out on its own. With decades of FPS innovation behind it, Dusk feels like a modern shooter, but still captures that 90s vibe better than any throwback I've played thus far. In fact, I would argue that Dusk can hold its own in terms of gameplay against some of the more modern shooters in the retro genre, such as Doom 2016 or the rebooted Wolfenstein franchise, and I'd even go so far as to say that Dusk pays a better homage to the greats of old than the rebooted franchises because of Dusk's polygonal modeling and low resolution visuals. Much like the original Doom, Dusk is an episodic game that was released in three parts, the foothills, the facilities, and the nameless city. Each episode offers a unique setting, all with their own nods to classic games and horror films. I could make a separate video entirely on Dusk's influences, but for the sake of keeping this review on target, I will only point out the most obvious ones. Like the Foothills episode, for example, is seemingly influenced by a mixture of the classic horror movie The Texas Chainsaw Massacre and the 1997 build engine game Redneck Rampage. Kill the intruder. In the first level of the game, you're in a basement surrounded by three leather faced rednecks, aka Leathernecks. Using your sickles, you are thrust into a battle against these three chainsaw dudes. I spotted a pistol behind some barrels but I'm sure the gas can would have worked just as well. After leaving the basement behind, you're rewarded with dual wielding pistols and a lever action shotgun that can also later be wielded akimbo. For me, the akimbo shotguns were my favorite weapon to use because of the cool flippy animation. Weapons in throwback games need to feel satisfying to use and you have weapons aplenty in Dusk that do. Most of them are reminiscent of the classics with a few that have their own twist. The pistol and shotguns are classic weapons that we've all seen before. The super shotgun as well, and it feels basically identical to the super shotgun of Doom 2. It even sounds almost the exact same. The assault rifle is a great utility weapon, and while it looked nothing like the chain gun from the original Doom series, it reminded me of it. The hunting rifle is a weapon much like the Quake 2 railgun. It's slow firing, powerful, and has zooming capabilities. I found it to be a great weapon for clearing out some of the stronger enemies. The heretic inspired crossbow is a very unique weapon, with the ability to magically pierce walls and enemies. I used it quite often to multi-kill lines of cultists. The crossbow also has the ability to launch the player in the air, much like a rocket jump but I personally never really utilize this feature. The mortar is Dusk's grenade launcher, but what makes it unique is that the mortars can be detonated after firing. This made it an ideal weapon for setting up explosions on chasing enemies, especially those pesky Wendigos. The rivet gun is the game's rocket launcher, and it does exactly what rocket launchers are supposed to do. But the rivet gun can be fired faster than any rocket launcher I have ever seen, and if you're not careful, it will eat up all your ammo in seconds. Lastly, adding some humor to the mix, there is a bar of soap on every level that can be used as a weapon as well. Barrels, boxes, and other items can be used to bludgeon enemies, so why not a bar of soap? In fact, the developers made the soap do 100 million damage, quote, because it was funny. I did not find myself using the soap much because it was difficult to pick up, and if you missed your shot with it, it was often more trouble than it was worth to find it again. However, it does one-shot everything in the game, including bosses, and if you pick up a bar on every map, you do get an achievement as well. 
The enemies in Dusk are a diverse cast, with new enemies introduced every episode. There are the Chainsaw Massacre dudes, the cultists who are basically reskinned imps from Doom, scarecrow guys with shotguns, goats that charge you and shoot blood, and this thing. The enemies keep the action fast-paced and intense, as almost every enemy charges the player. However, other than the different amount of damage they can dish, there's really not that much of a difference between the charging enemy types. Similar to my critique of a mid-evil, I feel Dusk has too many charging enemies, and if a sequel's ever made, I would love to see some more variety of enemy types. And as I already mentioned, the cultists kinda remind me of the imps from Doom, and a few of the other enemies also remind me of some throwbacks. Like this bone monk reminding me of the scrag from Quake, or this priestess reminding me of the knight from Quake, or this thing that I've learned is called a bone ball, and how it reminded me of the pain elemental from Doom 2. As I progress through episode 1, I notice other similarities with games like Redneck Rampage in terms of the setting, especially with the interior of the farm buildings. The 8th map of episode 1 really made me think of E3 map 2 from Doom. And the entirety of episode 2 really felt like it took inspiration from the Stalker series with the abandoned factories. This would make a lot of sense as apparently Dusk was originally going to take place in Ukraine where Stalker also took place. It was later that David Szymanski, the lead developer of Dusk, changed the location of the game's setting to his home state of Pennsylvania. You could also make the argument that Dusk includes references to Half-Life as well with the military enemies and the twisted laboratory levels. In any case, it is clear that Dusk was made with respectful nods to the greats before it, and a level of detail that hardcore genre fans will appreciate. In an interview with TechRaptor.net, David Zemanski said that when approaching level design, he would ask himself the question, what would Romero do? For the uninitiated, John Romero is the legendary developer and map designer behind the 90s Doom games and Quake. Zemanski spent a ton of time researching and studying Romero's non-linear and abstract approach to level design, and I think that is why Dusk feels like it's cut from the same cloth as those games. For me, this is the best part about Dusk. I call it onion level design. Like an onion, you peel back one layer just to reveal more underneath. You have one area of a level that has some enemies and seemingly no place to go, and then you hit a switch or open a door and it peels back a whole nother layer of the level you didn't know existed and often floods you with enemies from various hidden locations. You can tell that Szymanski studied Romero and other Doom mappers because this same principle of the onion level design originated with the Doom games. While I have mostly spoken about Dusk's similarities to 90 shooters, it does do one thing particularly well to separate itself from the pack. Dusk is able to be balls to the wall action one minute and then a spooky horror game the next. In one level, you will be fighting waves of enemies, and then the next you'll be in a cramped and pitch black area that requires you to navigate using only a flashlight with a very tight radius. Many of the enemies in Dusk also set you on edge, like the ever creepily sniffing Wendigo that is invisible until you do damage to it. or this fucking thing that is literally named The Horror. I find it rather impressive that the Dusk developers managed to create an action game with a ton of horror elements and tension, and the combination makes for a much more immersive experience. Movement is crucial in Dusk, and the freedom to move around the level is one of the game's best features. During swarming ambushes, constantly moving and using the speed of Dusk Dude is the key to survival. Strafing, strafe jumping, and bunny hopping will help you keep momentum and dodge the incoming projectiles. The game also is filled with opportunities to think outside the box, like this level with a creepy corn maze. Use boxes to get on top of everything and surprise your enemies instead of having them surprise you. The game is also filled with a ton of secrets, but admittedly, I did not really seek them out, just the obvious ones. 
I said in my previous video that I'm highly critical of boss battles in first person shooter games and sadly I think most of the boss fights in Dusk kind of fall flat. In episode 1, the first boss is a slow moving drunken alligator called the Intoxicator. The player can easily outpace it and kill it rather quickly. The second boss fight is the Duke Brothers boss fight, who are just larger cultists with more health and fireballs that track the player. I personally really wish I saw a little more variety with the Duke Brothers models and attacks, as this boss battle felt really uninspired. And finally, the last boss fight of the episode is something called the Experiment, that is just a really fast horse that spews a few fireballs at you, kill it, and another one spawns. None of these fights are particularly challenging as you can move around the arenas with ease and dodge most of the damage. In episode 2, there's one fight that I really enjoyed, but this is not because of the enemy, but instead the way that the arena was built with these floating platforms. One misstep and you die. I found that to be the most difficult part because the boss called Mama, who later becomes a normal enemy, goes down in seconds from the rivet gun. While the rest of the boss fights in the game are more or less the same, I will say Big John was a hilarious fight. And the Guardian was the most unique fight in the game that was actually a decent challenge. He did a ton of damage in tight spaces, and having to flip switches while he stalked you added quite a bit of tension to the battle. Adding to the horror element of Dusk, the game does begin to take on an otherworldly personality in Episode 2. Dark spaces, occult machines, and a laboratory level that becomes more twisted and more nonsensical as the player progresses. Dusk begins to step away from its influences with these levels and starts to become more unique. There are also power-ups like the ability to wall climb and a syringe that halts time and only progresses it forward when the player moves. From what I can tell, both of these power-ups are unique to Dusk and very fun to use. My favorite level of the second episode was the reactor level, a large arena full of buildings, walkways, and a giant lava pit right in the middle. This level is the most open level with many variations on how the player can tackle the obstacles. It is also a great example of that onion level design from Doom where enemies just keep spawning in from areas unknown to the player. The arena feel of this level made me feel like I was playing a space map from Quake 3 Arena. It was a very cool and unique vibe for Dusk that I for one really appreciated. In episode 3, the first level starts out familiarly with something that looks like it was ripped directly from Quake with its dark gothic look and stained glass windows. We are also introduced to the sword which is really fun and I honestly wish it was in the game sooner. You can one shot many enemies and even block against the other sword enemies. Then, as the level progresses, we find doom-like lava flows with tight platforms. However, eventually we find ourselves in a unique setting with ruins and snow. After that, we enter the City of Shadows, a gothic town that offers plenty of nooks and crannies to explore. Much like the onion levels of Doom, it starts off relatively quiet, but as soon as you find the red key, the enemies start to pour out. Halfway through the level, you have an underwater fight with a not so dope fish, and once it's defeated, you then raise the water level, flooding the entire town. Once past this level, the remainder of the final episode turns everything on its head, and begins to throw new concepts at us that we had not seen up until this point. These are some of Dust's most visually impressive levels, with abstract geometry, a challenging puzzle where you have to flip the entire level to fall to other areas of the map as well as a crazy atmospheric level with the tornado. The second to last level is the biggest arena battle of the entire game, with every single enemy you face up to that point coming at you in waves. The fight is very fun, and much like the previous arena battles in the game, it really harkened back to my arena FPS roots. At the end of the level there is also a fight against two experiment bosses and a guardian. And just to sound like a broken record for a minute, I really wish the boss fight here was something a little bit more original than what we had seen in the game already thus far. However, I will say the final level of Dusk is a pretty unique boss fight. You shall be my final test. 
you hear as you finally face the smooth voice that has been taunting you all game. Jacob, the cult leader, attacks you with great speed, putting your FPS skills to the test. After he's defeated, you face the true big baddie of the game, a Lovecraftian-inspired deity, Nyarlathotep. And since that is really hard to say, I'm just going to call him Nyar now. With a name like that, it immediately made me think of Quake's final boss, Shub Nigurath, who is also a Lovecraftian creation. He was worthy, you know, and he accomplished so much. Nyar is voiced by Stephen Waite, the actor who voiced Caleb in Blood, adding yet another throwback to the mix. The fight against him is pretty straightforward, and it made me think of the icon of Sin from Doom 2, as you have to shoot at specific weak points to defeat this enemy. And while the fight against Nyar may not be as high paced as the one against Jacob, it still ends in a satisfying way and sets us up nicely for a little sequel. Now, my power is yours. If it's not already obvious by now, I believe Dusk is a masterclass in FPS development and one of the best throwback boomer shooters ever made. And while it's easy to say Dusk looks like a Quake Doom hybrid clone on the surface, it is really a brilliant remix of the best aspects from the genre. And even with its influences, Dusk still manages to carve out its own identity with its humor, horror action mixture, and unique level design decisions. Dusk also features a horde mode that I honestly didn't try, where apparently you just battle waves of enemies and see how far you can get. And there's also a multiplayer called Dusk World, which to be honest, I have no idea if people play it or not, but the fact that it's there is pretty cool. And by the way, Dusk is also available on the Nintendo Switch for you console gamers. Be sure to leave me a comment if you've played Dusk. I'm really curious if you share the same opinion as me. Also, let me know if there's another throwback shooter you'd like to see me review. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a like and share it with your friends. And please subscribe to support the channel as I will have more review videos coming out soon. I'm Salty Octopus, and thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.